Hi everybody and uh, welcome, here we are, uh, to another TNT, actually I've got two cameras today, really fancy, look at that, two cameras, and uh, I could just do this all day, one camera, two camera, one camera, two camera, anyway, uh, it is very bright out here today because, um, oh hello, yes, you just uh, do your washing in the background there, uh, we've got, um, bright sunny day not a cloud in the sky uh, a bit of a light uh, easterly breeze at the moment what happens during the day here is that the uh, the, uh, the the easterly breeze which is the prevailing wind here this time of the year in this part of Thailand is fighting with the sea breeze as the hot air starts to rise from the land the sea breeze wants to come in and it's sort of uh, it's a battle between the two and usually this time of the day, the easterly wind winds, and then later in the day, the northwesterly sea breeze comes through. Hopefully that's interesting. Good morning to everybody, and I've got a few things to talk about. Uh, the Thai baht is dropping against most currencies at the moment. So we're certainly going to address that. Uh, also, there's been some uh, big trouble down in the south, the deep south of Thailand. So we'll cover that. Um, it looks like we've got a few friends who have dropped in to say hello and they're settling in uh, and maybe you're coming down to this part of the world so please if you do drop in and say hello so we are this is the the location of the crime this is where I killed my last laptop and I've returned to the scene I've now got a new laptop uh, which is this camera and uh, I'm using my iPhone for the other camera which gives me a little bit more latitude so we're very lucky to uh, to be up and running again. For those people that care, I know most of you don't, I've got a, an Apple, of course. Uh, it's an M2, uh, M2 uh, MacBook Air, and uh, beyond that, it's a 15-inch MacBook Air. So uh, that's what I'm using now, and uh, that's what I'm talking on. Of course, I've got my iPad. So we'll go through some of the uh, news stories today. And we'll start with uh, the Bangkok Post, and it says the currency nosedives amid more seasonal fluctuations, and the baht plunged against the US dollar on Friday, primarily influenced by external factors, with seasonal fluctuations expected to exert continued pressure on the local currency, potentially weakening to 37 uh, per dollar. That's 37 baht to the US dollar during the second quarter this year and the baht opened on Friday at 36.3 and I have to say that's roughly where it is at the moment uh, a significant decrease from Thursday's close of about 36 baht to the US dollar and the US Federal Reserve is expected to cut its policy rate three times this year starting in the second half and uh, these moves signal a dovish monetary global pol policy globally according to the uh, SCB Financial Markets Unit. And uh, the SCB Financial Markets Unit says seasonal volatility during dividend payments could potentially drive the baht to weaken to 37 per dollar. Uh, importers and exporters should prepare for foreign exchange hedging. And uh, according to Casacorn Bank, the baht's expected to strengthen against the dollar in the second half of the year, supported by improvements in the economy seasonal factors related to tourism and uh, they forecast the baht to appreciate to 35.2 baht by the end of the year so uh, yeah what is happening with the Thai baht and will this uh, well quite large drop over the last two or three weeks influence your decision to perhaps visit to Thailand or to reorganize some of your currency coming into the country so let's just have a quick look at uh, what is happening on the uh, the financial, well, the currency charts today. And this is from xe.com. And we can see uh, right there at the end of the graph, we've got the other uh, bar dropping, even though that graph is rising. That's the, the value of the US dollar against the Thai baht. And you've got, uh, that shows a whole year. And currently the Thai baht is 36.28, nearly 36.3 baht to the US dollar and back in October it uh, it dropped as far as 37 baht to the US dollar and we go back to April last year 
and we can see that's when the BART was the highest during the past 12 months when it got to 33.5 BART to the US dollar. Now checking the pound and generally over the last year the BART has been dropping gradually against the, uh, the British pound currently 45.7 BART to the British pound Checking with the Australian dollar, I have to say I'm not going to be checking all the currencies, just some of the ones that, uh, well, some of the main ones involving tourists coming to the country. And uh, yeah, the Australian dollar to the Thai baht, you can see it's been fluctuating quite a lot over the past 12 months, currently at a bit of a high, uh, nearly 24 Thai baht to the Australian dollar. That shows once again a whole year and uh, a very important one as far as tourism is concerned here in Thailand. Now the Chinese Yuan to the Thai baht, you can see over the past year, the car whizzes past and you'll hear a bit more background noise because I'm using the microphone from the Mac. But uh, we've got a situation where the, Chi the Yuan is sort of in the middle of where it's been uh, compared to its uh, peaks and troughs over the last year. So the, uh, the question to you is, uh, how does this influence you? Looks like the Thai baht is dropping against a lot of the currencies. And is this going to make any difference to the way that you are maybe treating your holiday plans? But uh, yeah, it could be good for, well, certainly US citizens. It's getting increasingly better for British citizens. So interested to know how it's going for you. Now we've got a story uh, as we head south now and this is quite disturbing remembering that uh, at the start of this week a couple of guests who were staying with us there they're heading back to Bangkok today so off they go wearing their helmets good people Nick and his lady friend Christy so Ramadan started at the start of the week and security forces in the deep south of Thailand were sort of bracing for possible uh, problems. It didn't stop this from happening. However, insurgents launched 39 coordinated attacks in four deep south provinces. This is being reported by nationthailand.com and suspected insurgents carried out coordinated attacks on at least 39 locations in the four southernmost provinces in the early hours of yesterday, a woman employee of a convenience store in Patani province, described as a Myanmar national, was reportedly killed in an explosion caused by a homemade bomb. The first attack happened around about 1am. Uh, a total of 20 attacks were reported in Patani, 11 in Yala, 6 in Naratiwat and 2 in Songkla. And uh, the Colonel Ekwarit said on Friday that local security authorities had been on alert for possible insurgent attacks during the current Ramadan month of fasting, which coincides with the 20th anniversary of the Takbai crackdown on Muslim protesters in Naratiwat province. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, he said they have no arrest warrants against these uh, people. They're a new group of assailants who are not on the record. So it's difficult to take preemptive actions against them. So trouble down there in the south, uh, it just continues. It's been going on uh, at a pace for two and a half decades, but it can be traced back almost 100 years. So uh, an ongoing problem for any Thai governments and authorities down in the deep south of Thailand. So um, yeah, it was expected that there would be some violence. Now it's happened and uh, no matter the preparations, very difficult to plan for an attack like that. But um, yeah, tourists are usually uh, not, uh, the, the road basically all the way through the south down to the Malay border is perfectly safe. It's so once you get off onto the side roads in some of the smaller towns that you might be at some sort of risk, but uh, I don't believe I can recall any of the tourist roads ever being uh, attacked over the past 20 years or so. Tell me if, uh, if I've got that wrong. Let's go to some of your comments and uh, I should find a way to put the comments up on the screen so you don't have to look at me all the time. Even worse, you could look at me here. And uh, greetings Tim, sound is fine, says Santi Sabai. Good morning from Seattle, says Ralph Lewis. Yes, hello again to everybody from Nong Nong Wai. This is from Nong Wai. So, 
Now, Stefan says, did Thailand buy a bit too much ruble? Uh, I think uh, this is disconnected with the situation in Russia, although it's all sort of intertwined one way or another with these international markets and a floating currency. John in Melbourne says, normally, AUD, I get 23,300 Thai baht uh, to, that would be, what, to... Ten dollars, ten dollars Australian would get you twenty three hundred baht. Um, if it makes airfares cheaper, then I like it. Says Thug Life. I think airfares are set to stay high for at least the immediate future. I don't see anything that's going to be bringing down uh, airfares anytime soon. Seems to be plenty of competition. Most of the airlines back in the sky, but uh, yeah, the airfares remain high. What have happened to that young Thai gentleman that co-hosted for a while? I forgot his name. Well, you, sir, would be talking about Nick. And Nick went off to study at a university in the UK. And I think uh, he's doing well. Last time I saw him, I, he sent me some pictures of him playing, I think, rugby. Is that what the British play? Rugby? It must be. So, uh, yeah, he was playing rugby. And uh, he was built to play rugby, too. So uh, good luck to Nick wherever he is. 20 separate attacks, they weren't very alert, says Robbie. Why attack 7-Eleven stores? WTF, says Thug Life. That's a really good question. Why attack 7-Eleven stores? I mean, they are owned by a, uh, a huge Thai conglomerate. Uh, there are some 14,000 7-Eleven stores in Thailand. Why would they go and attack 7-Eleven stores. I don't know. I'll be interested in what you think about that. And I predicted somebody would come up with this comment. Fun Size Media says, Islam is a peaceful religion. Now, the situation down in the Deep South is much more than just uh, differences uh, between religions. Generally, uh, Islam and Buddhism coexist very peacefully in most of Thailand. Now, right down on the border, there are some, uh, some more um, fundamentalists who would be using religion as part of their reasons for perhaps uh, initiating these attacks. But it's a lot more about real estate and border clashes and uh, claims to land, which is uh, really driving the, uh, the, these attacks over the last 20 years. But a lot of people want to put a religious spin on it and that is certainly an element. But I would say, uh, having investigated this and written about this in quite a lot of detail, uh, not, not only during my time in Thailand, but before, I think uh, the last article I wrote was boom, boom on the border, which is sort of half written in jest. But um, yeah, I have written quite a lot and uh, it's not just a, a religious dynamic. So thank you to John. John, thank you very much for your super chat all the way from Melbourne. And uh, a couple of ladies, they're all dressed up, uh, looks like they're going cycling, but no, they're on their motorbikes, um, just grabbing a quick coffee. We haven't had the hordes of cyclists arriving this morning, but I've got my eye out down the road. I'll get about a one minute warning before they arrive. But. Uh, just to explain why we get cyclists here, the road from Phuket to here is magnificent. It's like a four lane, a double, yeah, two lanes in each direction. Not a freeway, but a very good highway. And it's pretty and it's easy to drive and there's never much traffic on it. And it's a perfect place for cyclists. Not only that, once they get onto this strip, they've got almost 10 kilometres of straight, flat, well laid road and uh, yeah it's really good for cyclists I mean who wants to be going up and down hills well she's having a problem getting her motorcycle started and I think the more you keep on oh you got it going well done uh, Colby S says why can't foreigners get membership discounts at 7-eleven only ties well I don't know why well why you expect it to be getting a, uh, a membership um, Okay, uh, I don't have an answer for that. Um, uh, my only beef with 7-Eleven is that I can't scan with my phone. 
everywhere else I go, like 99.9% .9 of locations I go, even roadside vendors when I buy a sausage on a stick or something, they will accept a, a scan. So you just point your phone at uh, their QR code and bingo, it's paid. So uh, yeah, memberships, I, I don't know about the membership situation, but uh, uh, tell me, if you could, Colby, what, what the membership benefits would be. I know we get the, uh, the little stamps sometimes. Uh, when you buy a certain amount, you get a stamp and you collect the stamps and you win a, I don't know what you win, a birthday cake or something. So, uh, yeah, tell us what uh, you get as a member if you are a member of 7-Eleven. And I don't know why non-ties aren't able to get a membership. I, I don't have an answer for you. A great channel, Tim, says Tom W. Thank you very, very much. Please correct me if I'm wrong, says Key J. But I thought the Southern Troubles were more related to ethnicity. While Thai speaking, they consider themselves ethnically Malay. Well, yeah, there, there is that sort of ethnicity thing. Uh, the, the area, oh, it's a long, long history. But as I said, it's more about connected to ethnicity, more about real estate. And the fact that uh, those three southern provinces were once part of the, uh, the larger Malay state. But I'm not going to be going into a history lesson now, partly because I can't remember it all. Anyway, you're here on Turtle Beach. And the other thing I just wanted to mention in my housekeeping, two things, uh, thanks to Carlos and Pim. Now, Carlos is staying uh, with us in one of our beach houses. And uh, he's very kindly donated some... Uh, some uh, snorkeling gear and swimming gear that he's had that he's not using anymore. So thank you Carlos and Pim. It's really great when people uh, leave little things like that because uh, families arrive and they've got kids and uh, they're looking for things to do and it's great if we've got a few extra toys and bits and pieces and uh, things that people can use for recreation. So thank you to Carlos and Pim. Much appreciated. The other thing I wanted to mention, and this has uh, come up uh, during the week, is um, what happens in regards to deleted comments. Now, a few times this week, people have said, why are you deleting my comments, Tim? Uh, one, I think it was Moses Braun, who's been with us for a long time, uh, watching the programs, said, did you delete my comment, Tim? And a lot of people saying, oh, Tim only deletes comments he doesn't like. He leads all the good comments. Well, I mean, I'm not going to delete good comments, am I? As far as deleting comments, my policy is quite clear. I usually will leave 99% of the comments. Now, if people attack me personally or attack another commenter, if they get abusive, if they get rude, wow, that is a really noisy diesel engine. He's one of these little Nidnoi shops or Nidnoi truck, uh, which has got little bits of bits and pieces. It's like sort of a traveling uh, small 7-Eleven. Um, anyway, if you're abusive, uh, if you are just sprouting nonsense, like if you're talking about flat earth or we didn't go to the moon or whatever other sort of nonsense you might go on about, because it's factually incorrect, according to me, and it's my channel, yeah, I, I, I'll delete the comment. Somebody needs to fix their brakes. We've just had the arrival of a, a group of cyclists who will be click clacking their way into uh, Chip Fair Lele. I should say I'm at Chip Fair Lele. So uh, I, I won't, uh, just because you disagree with me and you come up with a good argument, oh, Tim, um, I disagree with you because of A, B and C. I'm never going to delete that. But if you say, you're a... and you start swearing and you make uh, ridiculous comments or accuse me of things that I either didn't say or I haven't done, I will delete those comments. Now, the, the fact is, it's my channel. Now, people will accuse me of, uh, of abrogating their free speech. Well, there's no such thing as free speech, really. Uh, you can say certain things uh, under certain constitutional um, uh, requirements and opportunities in certain countries. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> if you make false accusations, I'm going to delete those comments. 
uh, <coughs> free speech also has responsibility. And it's your responsibility not to libel people uh, and, and not to abuse them, not to be violent. So, I mean, I'd really have a, a wide latitude. Okay, some days I'm a bit grumpier than other days and I'll delete a few extra comments. But generally, I'm not going to be deleting comments. And I've got to the stage where people go, say, oh, Tim's going to delete that comment. I'm just going to ban you. I'm getting sick of having to respond to people accusing me of deleting their comments when I simply haven't. And I would also say that 99% of the time over the past couple of weeks, people say, oh, you deleted my comment. I've never heard of them before in my life, and I think they're just doing it to troll me. Okay. I'm in Thailand. Zen. Aussie Chris, thank you very, very much. Aussie Chris um, has given us a super chat. Morning, Tim. I left the clear skies of Australia last week because I missed the taste of this lovely fresh air in Chiang Rai. I think you were being sarcastic. Gotta love the burning season. Keep up the great shows. You're a legend. Uh, Aussie Chris, thank you very much for your, uh, your kind generosity. And uh, as far as Chiang Rai, Chiang Mai, Lampun, uh, Prayer, uh, Mer Hong Son, I mean, all those locations up high up in uh, northern Thailand, it's a horrendous time of the year. There's four months and the, the Thai government keep huffing and puffing and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And uh, this year it's been as bad, certainly the past a couple of months, as it's ever been. Uh, Chiang Mai was listed as the most air polluted country, uh, country, city in the world. Even though Thailand as a whole gets uh, a fairly good report because anywhere south of, say, Bangkok, and the air's mostly okay most of the times of the year. I mean, look here, we've got bright blue skies. I think I can turn this around up into the sky. Blue skies without a, a, single, uh, a single cloud. So, yeah, most of the time it's okay. Sorry if that camera's a bit crooked. There we go. All right, so what else have we got? <clears throat> I've got a few other stories to get to, by the way. Good morning from Bangkok. Great show, Tim, says Kayo. Cosmo YouTube needs an update. Sometimes my comments won't even appear. And not only on this channel, but the comments on PC work. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's the other thing, of course, that YouTube also has its own guidelines regarding comments. And bots will uh, always be checking comments on every single channel. And they've got their own guidelines. And sometimes bots will see a word and they'll just remove that comment whereas the context is not fully understood so the YouTube YouTube algorithm sometimes is responsible for removing comments and uh, I understand that uh, that annoys people as well but it is a platform that we choose to go on it's a private company I'm also using their platform and uh, it gives me an outreach to uh, well the whole world and I'm very very grateful for that but they've got their rules and I have to stick to their rules so um, yeah if you've got anything else to say about uh, the comments section you've got the comments here and we can have a debate about it while we're having this discussion uh, for the next uh, half hour or so uh, Humphrey Peak 7-Eleven is a Japanese company based in Texas seven holdings oh, I think it's a uh, I'll just check on that I think 7-Eleven in Thailand is wholly owned here in Thailand. Who owns, I'm happy to be wrong on this, 7-Eleven uh, in, oh hang on, that didn't work. Try that again, excuse me. Who owns 7-Eleven in Thailand? And uh, CP, all public company limited, is the 7-Eleven owner and franchiser. So, okay, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm aware that uh, it was a Japanese company. As of 2022, CPO had a total of 13,838 stores. I think it's over 14,000 now. Uh, an increase from uh, 12,000 in 2020. So in just two years, they added another uh, 1,400. And as I said, I think they're up to over 14,000 stores in Thailand now. So thank you very much to... Um, uh, Humphrey Peak for uh, giving us that information. Thug Life noticing the arrival of the cyclists. They're well entitled to come here. 
The reason the camera's moving around a little bit, by the way, is that uh, it's a bit windy. I'll just uh, lower it down a bit. Oh, we've got the computer in view, and I'll just... That might stop it wobbling around a bit for you. Uh, what else? Just checking here. Uh, referee Tim says, Yabbies nibbling your toes on last week's show. Wasn't Muradak Quarry, was it? I'm sure you remember it. Well, yes, I do remember the Muradak Quarry. Uh, it was a beautiful... Um, I used to walk there because I used to live up on, uh, on that uh, sort of peak of Mount Eliza. When I was at school there, at the Peninsula School, uh, we used to go for hikes. I was a boarder there as well for seven years. And uh, we would often walk uh, to, sort of over the hill, to this quarry. And they'd taken all the rock out and left um, this well, sort of basically a lake. A bit like the, the lakes that have been left after all the tin mining here in Panga and Phuket. And it was bright blue, the water. I mean, you definitely wouldn't want to go in there was full of, uh, I don't know, probably copper, and it was bright blue, but I do remember the Murda Quarry Lake uh, very, very well. Thank you for reminding me. Good morning from Amsterdam, Tim says John's Journey. Um, if they don't like the channel, they can always go elsewhere. Thug Life, you're absolutely right, but some people just like having an argument. They're usually anonymous. Uh, they don't have a face or a profile. And uh, I'm absolutely sure they're saying things to me in the comments section or saying to other commenters that they wouldn't say to the commenters or me in real life. People think the comment sections in social media are just an advertisement or a request to behave badly. And I do need to talk about foreigners behaving badly because I'll go back to Scott D posed a question a bit earlier on and a few people in Chicago on the program. Uh, good evening from a snowy Chicago, says Scott D. I'll get to his question in a moment, where I'm enjoying the beginning of a nine-day spring vacation, plan on achieving a thorough spring cleaning and organising project on our home garage and tool shed. He did have a question. Where is Scott's question? Here we are, Scott D. Revenue earnings notwithstanding from foreigners, just how much damage has the foreigners behaving badly hurt the reputation of the well-behaving tourists and expats? As we mentioned yesterday, out of all the tourists that have arrived over the past six months, the uh, figures from uh, the Thai police were that there had been, I think, 740 uh, either arrests uh, or deportations. That 740 in total. I think it was, just off the top of my head, I think it was 68 people had been deported. Now, we also reported that some 14 million people, 14 million foreigners have arrived over that same six months. And somebody did the calculation and it worked out that it was 0.001% of all the foreigners coming to Thailand had caused a problem that de deserved being arrested. Now, most of those people who had been arrested were things like uh, not having a work permit or whatever. Violent crimes is even smaller, like a tiny proportion. So over the past couple of weeks, we've had these two idiot Swiss. <clears throat> I think I can call them idiots. That's not quite as libelous as saying they're guilty because I don't know, the judge will make that decision. And then we had the two Kiwis, and then we had the Russian woman this week. By the way, no, I think it's all been said about those particular uh, incidents. I don't want to inflame the situation. I mean, I do realise uh, it's my job to read out the news, but I also understand that by reading out those stories, I'm inflaming the problem. I'm uh, sort of putting a spotlight on those stories. And the stories are worth reporting. <clears throat> but we do, of course, report that there are ties committing crimes as well. And we do report that there are too many monkeys, that it's smoky up in Chiang Mai and a million other things. So there has been this spotlight on foreigners behaving badly. And people love jumping on the bandwagon. And when it was the Swiss, it's all oh, Swiss are bad. And when it was the Kiwis, oh, all Kiwis are like that. And then with the Russian woman, oh, what do you expect from Russians? I mean, the sort of racist nonsense people go on about, and they jump on any racist bandwagon they can when they get the opportunity. And the situations are isolated. 
they're isolated in their own communities and they're I isolated generally when you look at the huge amount of foreigners coming to Thailand. Again, statistically, zero. 0.001% of foreigners coming to Thailand over the past six months have been arrested, most of them for procedural matters like overstaying or uh, work permit issues or things like that. Violent assaults, tiny, tiny, tiny proportion, proportion, and 68 people have been deported. Again, some of them for things like not having a work permit or uh, you know, buying property with a Thai nominee or something like that. So hopefully, Scott, that uh, answers the question from my point of view. Other people will have uh, different impressions, and I'm sure we're going to get to that. Uh, hello, Tony Fossey. Greetings from Airlie Beach in North Queensland. It's going to be in Thailand on the 10th of April. Scanning down a bit further in the program. Um, question, what happened to Get Out David, the Swiss guy? Ask Nong Wo So. Uh, I believe he's still in Thailand and he's, uh, I think he's out on some sort of bail. This is the Swiss guy from Cape Yamu and he's awaiting a trial for his, uh, his alleged misdemeanours. So uh, that's about all I can, uh, all I can say. Uh, I thought PayPal was going to stop in Thailand, I recall a year or so ago. Stephen HHH Pattaya from Canada originally. Uh, so all I can say about that is I don't know. Um, I remember reporting that um, uh, PayPal was going to... Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly what's happening with, uh, with PayPal. But yeah, some people still using PayPal as soon as I know. So there may be people in the comment section that know a lot more about that than I do. Evil Twin says, wokeness removes comments. Oh my God. That's the sort of comment I'd remove. That's the sort of asinine rubbish that people think the word wokeness somehow covers everything that in their mind is bad. Uh, so evil twin, you really need to come up with something a little bit more intelligent than that to get my attention. I certainly won't be responding. Dark Cloud says, over all the years, I'm sure it's around the same numbers, but it gets magnified by social media. Sure, Dark Cloud, social media, uh, for all the good it might do, also does amplify these stories. And uh, <clears throat> as far as the Swiss man uh, with the, uh, the foot in the back of the, th uh, the Thai doctor uh, in Phuket, I mean, that was really, in my opinion, way over amplified beyond what it actually deserved. Uh, most times, it wouldn't have even rated a mention on any Thai media, but it got grasped by the Thai media, assisted, of course, by the <coughs> idiot videoing the, uh, the thing and putting that video up online, for whatever reason. Uh, it's very rare for a Thai to commit a crime against a Farang, says Thug Life. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's rare, but uh, it does happen. There have been some violent clashes. Look, I don't, really don't want to go digging around, but I can recall quite a few um, tuk-tuk drivers, for example, in Phuket have attacked uh, foreigners from time to time. Uh, thank you very much to David Clark. Appreciate your support, David Clark. We look forward to your next visit to Thailand, and we've got a lot to catch up on, but thank you very much for supporting the channel. Mr. Bhutan Thumpsky. That's an interesting name. What have you got to say? The whole cracking down on fake companies at the moment has got to be playing on some people's minds, considering most businesses and some properties are set up like that. Yeah, look, you're right. Uh, a lot of people in the past have been encouraged by both Thai lawyers and also real estate companies to think that they can own property uh, in Thailand by setting up a shelf company with a Thai nominee or Thai nominees for the sole purpose of having some control over that land. Now the thing is that you never own the land. The company might own the land, but as a foreigner you'll only ever have 49% of that company. You're not allowed to own any more than 49%. Now you can play with the, uh, the, the constitution of the company and uh, somehow 
<coughs> make the other shareholders uh, unable to t take hold of your company. I mean, again, you're going to need a good lawyer. But it's against the spirit of the Thai law, which says foreigners can't own land. So anybody who have tricked the system or used the workaround by setting up a Thai company, in good faith, they're not trying to do anything they didn't think was illegal. Most people have done it thinking that the whole thing was totally legal. But the thing is, although it might be a semi-legal workaround, and it is just a workaround, foreigners are not meant to be owning Thai property. End of story. So, as I said, every single real estate agent, it's in their best interest to be able to make sure that foreigners can buy land. Now, foreigners can own freehold of a condo, in most cases, but they can't own freehold property. And that's just the way the law has been set up. Whether you like it or not, that is the law. So if you've got a, 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 a real estate company, a property company, the land rats as we call them, telling you that you can set up a, a company with a Thai nominee to get ownership of a, a land in Thailand, they're just really furnishing their own pockets. They don't care what happens to you after they've got their commission. And of course the laws can change. So just get some very, very good advice if you do want to be dabbling in Thai property. Make sure you've got a lawyer on your side. And if you are setting up a Thai company, make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's and do lots of homework. Dark Cloud says the Pattaya real estate agent that made off with all the rent and deposit money for an apartment complex. Uh, that is a bad crime against Farang and hope he gets tracked down. Yeah, I was following that story, pretty nasty. Uh, a lot of people, um, they were going to rent a property and found out that six other people had already rented that property and the agent had vanished, of course, with the money. Australia should implement the Thai land ownership rule. Now, this is, oh, that's also from Thug Life. Thug Life, you're being very busy today. Yeah, a lot of people uh, I know from my home country saying, oh, all these Chinese coming and buying up our property. Not fair, the bloody Chinese. Well, the fact is the Chinese can't buy the property if you don't sell it to them. If the Australian government says foreigners can own land, then you blame the Australian government, not the opportunistic buyer who comes in to buy property or buy businesses. Um, Mr. Boot and Thumsky, again. 10 million, bar 10 million baht villa blacklisted, no recourse, ouch. Yeah, I mean, this is the problem. Uh, there was a situation uh, probably about eight months ago now in Phuket where um, uh, properties or, or a, a lawyer's office, trying to get the story right, was raided. And the, uh, all the, the, the dealings and the companies they had set up were deemed to be illegal. And all the people who had bought uh, property through those companies, they lost everything. They lost the property and they lost their money. I think there was about 20 mostly Russians and Ukrainians from memory who had used this uh, one Thai lawyer in Phuket to, um, to think that they would be able to buy land. You've got to be careful. John Jackson, sorry we didn't make it to Thai Mueang Beach for our stay on Wednesday. I'm back in Chiang Mai, have ankle surgery on Tuesday. That's motorcycles for you. Oh, this is John who was coming down with his wife to uh, stay with us for a day, but he had a bit of an accident on the way, so I hope you are feeling better and uh, that you're going to be repaired very soon. A question from Warren Williams. Would you consider taking out Thai citizenship? How difficult is it? Hurdles in doing so. Thank you. Thanks, Kaz Melbourne. Warren Williams, or Kaz. Uh, getting Thai citizenship is very complicated. Getting permanent residency is not quite as complicated, but it's still complicated. Now I know in Australia, for example, if you're a student and you decide to stay in Australia, I think after three years you're able to apply for permanent residency. Here in Thailand, it's a much, much, much more complicated and it's very expensive. And there are some 
quite high bars set that you need to attain, including, uh, look, I can't remember all of them, but you have had to have a certain number of years of uh, renewals of a, a legal visa. You have to be able to speak a certain level of Thai language, which cuts me out automatically. Uh, there's a few other things. But it, it does take a long time. Each country is only allowed uh, a certain number of people each year to apply for permanent residency or a citizenship in Thailand. Uh, I know a person who's been doing it, and they've been doing it, this is the Thai citizenship, they've been doing it for about 15 years. So they started this process 15 years ago and they're still not uh, completed. So it uh, does take a lot of red tape and at some uh, level it takes uh, someone that you need to be able to speak to. So you've got to have some, some friends who uh, may be able to help you through the process. Uh, okay, so uh, we, we'll move on. Ben Brahm. Americans can hold 100% of a company in Thailand through the Treaty of Amnity. Ben, that is correct. However, it's not automatic. There are quite a few hoops you need to, uh, to jump through and you would need to speak to uh, a very good lawyer to help that, uh, set that up for you. Now, I mentioned uh, Ben Hart from Integrity Legal because he was formerly American, now he's got Thai citizenship. Uh, he's been through the process of citizenship. He's also obviously helped a lot of uh, American people who want to set up a company. Not quite as uh, uh, cut and dried as you might think. There's still quite a lot of red tape. Tony Restol says, good morning, Tim. Red the tax issue here in Thailand, question. Read the, oh, huh? Sorry, Tony, don't quite understand your comment. I'm not sure if you're asking me a question or if you're saying I should be asking you a question. Mark Hanna, rent a place to live and put the money that you would have used in Bitcoin and in four years you would have four times your cash. Mark, that's not a guarantee. If you invested in Bitcoin in November, what about uh, two years ago? Uh, you, you pretty much lost, I don't know, 50% of the value within uh, a, a few weeks. So Bitcoin very high at the moment and good luck to those people that are uh, investing in fresh air and doing very well. But uh, the bottom could drop out tomorrow and you're going to have absolutely no recourse except hoping, hoping that some other idiot will come along and buy the Bitcoin and push the price back up again. So uh, I wouldn't be recommending people invest in Bitcoin, but if you've taken the risk and you're prepared to lose your money and you've made heaps of money out of it, then good luck. However, I have to agree with you, Mark, in saying that if, uh, I think it's a good idea to invest your money in something that uh, you understand and you know about and uh, rent in Thailand. There's plenty of really good, relatively cheap, depending on where you're renting, property available here in Thailand. I think I've rented some eight or nine properties over the 11 years. Never had, touch wood, any problems. <clears throat> and you can find some real bargains if you look. And you end up with flexibility. You can go and live anywhere you like with a minimum of a problem. Okay, you said 7-Eleven are owned by a Thai conglomerate. I believe that in fact 7-Eleven uh, in the world is owned by a Japanese conglomerate. Yes, you're right, Leo, it's a, it's a franchise. <clears throat> the franchise owned by CP All, and thank you very much, yes, 7-Eleven is a Japanese company, but the franchise are operating here in Thailand for many years. Uh, oh, Tony Restall, maybe this is clarification. Surely, if you pay tax, you should benefit from items such as health coverage for taxpayers, etc. <clears throat> well, Tony, look, that's a, a fair comment. There are people like long-term retirees who live here and uh, also people who are long-term business people like myself who pay tax. And um, depending on the way your company is set up, you may or may not be able to get free health care. It does depend on how your company is set up and your position in the company. But if your company has issued you a B visa and you're an employee of the company, not the general manager I think you will get uh, free health care having said that uh, once you're over 60 uh, that stops so even if um, or even with my B visa I, I don't get any free health care so I've taken out private health insurance and also uh, there are plenty of people who just put some money in the bank 
for a rainy day and they just pay their way through the, uh, the health system here, which in some cases can be very, very cheap. Um, we mentioned, of course, uh, Steve, who lives down the road here, who will be doing Grumpy Old Men with tomorrow at some stage when we can fit it in. Uh, he had a hernia operation done for 10,000 baht. Now that's about uh, 300 US dollars. Covered everything. The hospital visit, the doctor's fees, and uh, his medication. So yeah, there are several ways you can uh, get health care here in Thailand. But if you are living here, you do need some sort of either cash in the bank for a rainy day, or you're gonna need some sort of health insurance. Happy birthday! Oh, thank you. <laughs> Somebody having a happy birthday. Oh, he's got the cake delivered to him as well. Happy birthday to you, sir. Mark Hanna says, rent a place to live in. I think I've already done that one. Uh, let's go down a bit. Oh, we've got a few uh, super chats I'd like to acknowledge. Thank you to all the people who uh, do support the channel. It is incredibly appreciated. You can support the channel by just watching, and uh, I appreciate that too, believe me. But to Daryl McGee, thank you very much from Australia. Daryl's got a comment. Back in Brizzy, Brisbane, after a month in Isan. <coughs> Plane booked already and countdown started again. Have a good day, Tim, and everyone here. Thank you very much, Daryl, and uh, best wishes to you in Brisbane, and we look forward to your next visit. Hopefully you'll get to uh, Thai Mung someday. Scott D, thank you very much, Scott. As a commercial aviation enthusiast, and knowing that you are too, what are your top three commercial airplanes flying into Phuket? Are we talking about airlines or actual equipment? Uh... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, don't quite understand the question. <laughs> if we're talking about airplanes, um, there, there used to be a like a shuttle service, I think they called it. This was oh, a good five, six, seven years ago. And uh, Thai Airways used to fly the Jumbo, the 747-400, uh, in a shuttle service back between Bangkok and Phuket. They'd barely get the damn thing up in the air and they have to start coming down again because it's only an hour in the air from Bangkok to Phuket. But uh, yeah, the runway um, would just fit a 747-400. It seems to be a little bit too small for uh, an Airbus A380. I don't think any of those have ever landed at the Phuket International Airport. Having said that, they've been extending the runway another 30 or 40 metres over the past couple of months. Seems to be taking forever tons and tons and tons of soil being dumped at the end of the runway to extend it a little bit further or maybe they're just increasing the turning circle at the end of the runway I'm not sure but um, so you've got to love the uh, the, the old Boeing 747-400 and over the years I've had many very happy flights in them but compared to some of the new planes like the A380 uh, uh, they sort of show their age. They're much noisier and um, yeah, these new planes like the A380 are, for all intents and purposes, uh, almost silent when you're flying. I mean, of course there's noise, but they're much, much, much quieter than the old planes. And they're also in Thailand is, um, not only Thailand, but around Asia, um, the Airbus a brand of aircraft are much more popular than Boeing's. And uh, lately, in the last couple of years, a lot more Airbus being sold into Asian airlines than Boeing. Uh, Boeing, of course, going through their own problems at the moment and uh, working very hard to get uh, especially Chinese airlines to try and buy their planes. But given the trade wars uh, and the ongoing fracas between the US and China regarding um, their own trying to sort of find a nice way of saying this. Uh, their differences regarding trade and stuff. Um, the, the Chinese seem less inclined to buy the Boeing equipment than in the past. So, yeah, um, most of the time I've been flying on small planes. I do like, well, you ran over me. I do like the um, Airbus A321, 
the, uh, which is the extended uh, Airbus. That's not the little single aisle 320. It's the extended 321. And I always used to get um, a seat on an exit row because there's two lots of exit rows, and I always used to be able to get a seat at one of the uh, the exit rows. Some people arriving in the electric car. It looks like they're. Uh, they're going to come and say hello. I don't think they are going to come and say hello, so we won't worry. Uh, Hans says, uh, last aircraft I flew on to Phuket was a Singapore Airlines 737-800, uh, uh, one of the last good 737s. Yes, certainly um, the 737 in the past has been a very reliable aircraft. Not currently. Atheist One says, I agree, Tim, the Australian government could easily change investment law in Australia too. If we can't buy in your country, you can't buy in ours. Okay, well, that of course is up to Australians and the government to decide what they want to do with that. I went to the ER here in the US. ER, emergency something or other. And it would cost me, okay, $2,700 for them to take care of pneumonia. Uh, that and uh, and that's with my work insurance USA medical is so expensive. That's from the Wu-Tang Life. Mark Hanna bashing on about Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is held for a four-year period, no person in Bitcoin's 15-year history, regardless of uh, the date in which it was purchased, has ever lost money on the purchase after holding it for four years. You'd say that just about everything. Uh, but yeah, if you did buy Bitcoin, um, just before November, what in 2022 or 2021? I can't remember. It and I mean it, it's just a roller coaster. There's there's just nothing to support it except for goodwill, hope, and prayer. There's no product. There's no services. There's nothing to build that product around. It is you're just buying wishful thinking. And as I said, good luck to you if you've got money. And you, you're willing to take the risk, throw it at Bitcoin, go for it, be my guest. But be prepared to lose it too. And don't come back complaining when you do. Just sold some Bitcoin and an ETH and bought a house. Winning. Good for you, DW. And that's the thing that everybody who owns Bitcoin does is they keep on pushing the positive narrative. Because the more people that buy it, the higher the price goes and the more money that goes in their pocket. I mean, it's sort of a Ponzi scheme in a way, but people are well entitled to uh, deal in Bitcoin and they will be very positive about it because that's what pushes the price up. There's nothing else. There's no increased sales. There's no additional services. <clears throat> there's no rise in value beyond pure wishful thinking. Uh, Al, Al Schneider or AI Schneider. Hi Tim, question for a first time visitor. Who wants a low key beach vacation? Where might you recommend? Well, low key beach location doesn't get any lower key than here in uh, Panga. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want a low key beach location, the best beaches in Thailand by far are in southern Thailand, except for a place like Koh Chang which is off the, uh, the coast of Rayong. Rayong, yes. So, um, yeah, you come down south, go down to Kokradan, go down to Trang. Uh, there's lots of islands down there. Uh, Krabi, you can jump off to lots of islands in Panga Bay. Koh Yao Yai, Koh Yao Noi. Um, uh, Pee Pee, yeah, it's youngsters. Uh, lots of drinks and drugs there these days. Uh, Phuket, yeah, depending on where you stay there, you can find a quiet beach, but you need to be up the north of the island. Um, here in uh, Panga, yeah, you've got plenty of beaches in uh, Natai Beach, uh, you've got Kokloi, uh, Tasai Beach, and of course here at Tai Mung. But yeah, I mean, this is remote, there's no bars around here, um, you have to drive two kilometres to get to the supermarket about one and a half kilometres to get to the main town to go to the convenience store. So, yeah, I mean, this is pretty remote here at uh, the Tai Mung Beach. But southern Thailand is where you're going to find the best beaches, the cleanest beaches, and um, they're, they're facing the Andaman Sea, not the Gulf of Thailand. Of course, there's also uh, Koh Samui, 
Kopangan uh, and uh, Kotau. Um, now they're pretty busy these days, fairly touristy and quite expensive. Getting to Kosamui is a bit of a problem these days. You've only got the ferry or very expensive flights with Bangkok Air. So uh, yes, be aware of getting to Samui. It's uh, the tyranny of distance is Samui's biggest problem. I'm sure I'm gonna have people belting me up over Bitcoin. Something about Airbus somewhere here. I think just uh, uh, Ismail Azazala. Airbus is not popular because of the brand. But the financing, France and German government subsidised the company to provide employment. Boeing does not engage in similar practice. Well, at the end of the day, uh, exactly how they're financed or how the companies are run. I mean, Airbus is a conglomerate of uh, not just two governments. I think there's four or five governments involved. Um, but we're talking about the quality of the planes and the, <clears throat> the satisfaction that you get from flying these planes whether you find the planes aesthetically pleasing, I suppose, from the outside. And at the moment, uh, Airbus is way ahead of Boeing in sales and the quality of their aeroplanes and being recognised by the airlines around the world who are simply buying more Airbus than Boeing at the moment. That situation could change in the future. Boeing will eventually, I'm sure, get its act together. The quality will, uh, will return, I'm sure, and they'll start coming out with some wonderful planes again. But at the moment, uh, Airbus are leading the sales race by a long, long way and have uh, been ahead of Boeing for about uh, four or five years now. Uh, happened to notice Captain in and out. Do you dare invite him to say hello or get the rest of the show hijacked? That's from David Stevenson. I don't know where uh, Captain is. I'm sure if Captain wants to come and say hello, he will. Um, okay. Uh, what's the purpose of gold then, Tim? Uh, Duke Nguyen. Look, I'm no financial expert. Uh, I'm very, very uh, uh, subjective when it comes to finance because I don't invest in anything. I mean, okay, I've invested in my properties for an Airbnb short-term rental sort of business, if I want to use uh, the word business very loosely. But uh, I'm not a financial expert, so I don't have uh, any feet in any of these camps. I don't have any money to burn on these things. So my comments are completely objective. I don't care what happens with them because they don't affect me. Because I worry if it affects you, I don't want it, you to lose money. But what is the purpose of gold? Well, gold has sort of been a, a standard over the years. And when some of the financial markets get a bit dodgy, it seems that people start buying gold as a, a sort of a more reliable asset long term. But beyond that, I'm not really going to comment because I'm not qualified to do so, except to say that I, I don't have any money in any of these things. So any comments that I make are completely objective. <clears throat> How many Bitcoin investors are long-term investors? Asks Hans. I don't know. Getting married to a Thai citizen uh, have to go to your embassy, need CNI certificate of no impediment, 65 pounds, certified passport, 25 pounds, then have to officially change into Thai. This is from Thai 2112. I don't know if you're just telling me that or it's a question, but... Um, Good luck. Get back to me if you sort of want to ask a question. I may not have, uh, have an answer. Um, okay, Cosmo. And you need proof of actually being together for 90 days. Again, people having a bit of a chat in the, um, the chat section. The richest people in the world is holding on to Bitcoin, but I'm sure we all know better than them. The richest people in the world are holding on to Bitcoin Tim is the Peter Schiff of Thailand. Uh, no, he's not. He's absolutely not. But when it comes to Bitcoin, you are just taking risks. And good luck to you if you want to take the risks. <coughs> good luck to you if you want to encourage everybody else to buy Bitcoin. I'm just saying that what are you actually buying? No one's been able to tell me over the past, I don't know how long has Bitcoin been around, 10, 12 years? You're buying fresh air. Uh, my father once said, maybe I'm uh, sort of encouraged by him to stick to this mantra, but he said, 
don't buy anything you can't drive past every day. But look, I, I don't want to get into the Bitcoin argument. I'm not an expert. Again, I'm objective. I don't own any Bitcoin. I never have. I don't have any investments which involve Bitcoin. So I don't have uh, any money in that particular till. So I, uh, I don't have anything to say other than the way I see it from my opinion. I'm sure your opinion might be different, but all the richest people in the world don't have Bitcoin. That's not true. Do you ever go swimming in the sea at Turtle Beach? Yes, every single day. I swim in the beach pretty much every single day. This time of the year, it's a pretty good swimming. There is a nasty break because it's very, very steep. Well, the beach is like that. And when the waves come in, they don't sort of break out at sea and then float in. They break right on the shore. And uh, yesterday, there was quite a swell coming in off the uh, Andaman Sea. And it was like this one, one and a half metre sometimes, wall of water right on the beach. A great big, uh, is that Captain? I'll, I'll grab him on the way back. So yeah, the, this wall of water facing me as I was trying to get into the water. So you've got to time your entry. But once you're in, that's ah, beautiful. It's like swimming in a bath. Um, hi, Captain. Going to come and say hello? Come over here. People saying, where's Captain? Hello. So this is the camera up here. Uh -huh. So what do you, what did you buy something? That's your watch, is it? Yes, I need 14 o'clock now. It's 10 o'clock lady. Oh, it's ten, oh, this is the 10 o'clock lady. Okay, yeah. you're not going to school today? Oh, because I already finished my school. So no school on Saturday? Uh, 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 Sunday? No, on Sunday. Okay. Uh, not on Sunday. All day. All day? Okay. Yes. Your, uh, your fancy haircut's disappearing yes. as your hair grows back. Yes. Do you like your haircut? Yes, I like it. Okay, all right. Thanks for saying it. Bye-bye. Okay. See you, Captain. Okay, okay there you go. <clears throat> you asked for it. Uh, okay, just scrolling down, I think we're sort of uh, pretty much through our topics. Um, do the girls take Bitcoin? Asks misinformation. If not, I'll stick to bills. If you can't touch, see or smell it, don't buy it, says Ty Draper. Yeah. Hey, Captain. People are saying hello, yeah. Captain. Uh, Tim, you are buying a store of value. <laughs> Duke, I know exactly what you're doing. This is all this sort of positive commentary that you've got yourself completely convinced about. I mean, it's a cult. You're buying a store of value. You're buying fresh air, mate. Just like someone buying a shiny yellow rock for the last 5,000 years. Billionaires own Bitcoin. Please read the news. I do read the news. Probably a little bit versed across the scope of the news on Bitcoin than the people who just choose to read the positive things about Bitcoin. So you can operate in your own echo chamber and believe what you want, but uh, the reading I've done about Bitcoin is much broader, the good and the bad, because there are good and bad sides to every investment. Um, so yeah, talking about things like gold, okay, I see what you're comparing gold to Bitcoin. Yeah, but the thing is, you actually, at the end of the day, have a rock, a gold rock. You actually own a piece of something. So if push comes to shove, if the shit hits the fan, you've still got that rock. With Bitcoin, you've got something in the ether. Now you're saying you're just buying a store of value, but you're buying fresh air. It exists only in the, uh, the ether. It exists only online. It's like uh, Steve with uh, Boontongs, his bar. Uh, this is an invention up in his own mind. People come and visit the place and they go, well, where's the bar? Well, it exists only in Steve's mind. Anyway, I'm not going to go any further than that. Duke, you believe what you want. Good luck if you make millions and millions on Bitcoin. I couldn't be happier for you. But if you lose some money, don't come back. You, I know you won't come back because you've got in your mind that it will come back one day. It'll return to value one day. And in many cases it has and it may indeed in the future. 
David Hodgson, comment, hope I didn't miss anything. The frigging is a pain. Okay, thanks David. Uh, two more comments and then time to go. Where do you buy Bitcoin? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Castlevetro, every four years fools buy a fake coin, then for four years they sober up, then the next cycle more fools try to make money off fresh fools. That's sort of the way it works. Thank you very much. Uh, how do you send a million around the world in 10 minutes? Only one way, using Bitcoin. A good luck to you. If that's the reason you're buying Bitcoin is so you can send a million well, you're not sending a million dollars, you're sending uh, fresh air valued at a million dollars around the world in 10 minutes. You're not sending a million dollars, you're just sending something that is perceived to be at that value. And during those 10 minutes, it might become two million dollars or it could become nothing. John John, these old timers that have no idea about bitcoins, this clown talking about the EFA, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, when it's making us, I uh, hope, some money, you got no idea, bro. Thank you, John John. Appreciate it. As I said, I'm sure I was going to get these comments. These old timers. Oh, the old timer, that Australian bald guy. Doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, if we're too ignorant for some, then please leave. Um, it's a speculative currency, a very volatile one, says Vanilla Man in America. So a prudent investor would not put in more than 3 to 6% of a total portfolio. Can we have a dedicated day to discuss Bitcoin, like the 29th of February? Thanks, Mark. Oh, we won't be having a dedicated day to discuss Bitcoin, but uh, yeah. Uh, I have the feeling that they're just trolling you now. I know they are trolling me. And as I said, the best thing that anybody owning Bitcoin can do is to encourage other people that Bitcoin's a good investment and that they should buy some Bitcoin as well. That's the way it works. That's the way that they push the price up. Positive thinking, reinforcement, reinforce the cult. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bro, crypto is the future. Bro. Tim, I hope to have a beer with you soon to debate more on Bitcoin and other topics, says Duke Nguyen. Duke, very happy to have a chat to you anytime, but it's not going to be more than about half an hour. I really don't have any more time to talk about fresh air than that, but I'm happy to talk to you. If you want to take the trouble to come to Timeline, I will give you half an hour, let you talk without me interrupting, and we'll have a coffee. I'll pay for the coffee. I'll pay for the coffee in cash, not Bitcoin. Thanks for the show, Tim. Sorry it was hijacked by the cryptos. Looking forward to Grumpy Old Men tomorrow, says Key J. Thank you, everybody. Ignorance personified, says Johnson. They're all getting onto their friends. Hey, jump onto this chat and tell him he's an idiot. Quick, get on there. He's attacking our Bitcoin. So with that, I'll say goodbye. Hopefully you have a great weekend, or at least the, rep, uh, the rest of Saturday. Love your shirt, says Steve Higson. That's probably the most intelligent comment we've had today. Tim, how does it work with visas? Now is Europe going to get longer visa-free soon? I'm from the Netherlands. Finally, John's journey. Uh, yes, the Prime Minister was in Europe. He discussed uh, the visas for ties going to Europe. I'm sure it was discussed whether there'd be some sort of reciprocal thank you very much, which may include an extension of the visa-free period. In other words, people can arrive from most of the European countries without applying for a visa before they come. They get a, um, a visa exemption on entry, it's a stamp, it is a visa of sorts, and then they can stay for at least 30 days now Will that increase to 60 or 90 days? I don't know. Nothing has been discussed, but there is some talk that ties may get reciprocal visa-free entry into Europe. Thanks for coming. I will see you next time. Been great having you with us, even all those people from crypto. I don't hate you. <laughs> it's, I think Bitcoin is a, well, in my view, it's a scam. But good luck to you if you're making lots of money. I hope you continue to do so. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.